It's time for Veterans Issues, the show that brings you information about veterans, military, and their family. Now here's your host, Ken Rollins. Welcome to Veterans Issues. Ken Rollins here. Today's guest is a Oxford police named uh, Jerry Lyon, a very dear friend, but knowing him at least 100 years. Come back, we're going to talk about community policing and other things. To get you a pen, be right back. Welcome back to Veterans Issues. Ken Rollins here. Today's guest is Jerry Lyons. He's with the Oxford Police Department. He does a special program there that I've been watching for quite a while. It's called Community Policing. And we're going to talk about that today, amongst other things. Welcome to the show, Jerry Lyons. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Good to see you. Good to be here. Uh, yeah, we've been knowing each other a long time. Man, we have. You. How long have you been on the Oxford Police Department? I've, I've been here for just over two years now. Two years. Two years. And before that, you was with 911. That's where I knew you. I yeah. was way back in '98. Uh, oh Lord! I started at 911. I was 18 years old. Wow! I didn't uh, know that. Sure was. Yeah, but we had a we had a good uh, some good friends out there, good folks, that do great work. That's uh, we could spend a whole day today talking about the calls and stuff you responded to. Absolutely. A lot of people think when they dial 911 that they, they automatically a bunch of people there at 911 got ambulances and fire trucks and policemen is on their, on their do, way. Would think that we would come straight out yeah. from, from answering the phone call. Yeah, so when are you going to get here? <laughs> uh, well, I'm not coming, ma'am, but I guess you're not going to go. <laughs> but it's uh, it's quite a quite a deal. Everybody needs to go back and just watch the monitors for a little while in the life of a 911 uh, yeah. person. But anyway, we're going to talk today about, uh, you, you said a couple of years at Oxford, and you do community policing. And I I've seen a lot of the things you do. You're in the churches, your schools, and events, uh, special events. What all, what all do you do? Uh, I know you got a bike. You ride a bike I, a lot. I, I do. I, I ride a uh, one of our police bicycles, and it's more about getting out and meeting people. Um, on a on a bicycle, you meet about twice the amount of people that you would in a car, and and have twice as many interactions. And we work a lot of I work a lot of church events. Um, we did Fiesta at the lake not long yeah. ago, and it's just about getting out and being seen and, and uh, letting the community know that we're there for them. Well, there's another side too, is to see that that uh, you're approachable, and that they, uh, they can talk to you. Does anybody ever come to you and tell you any secrets about things? Um, I have lots of people that come up and talk to me, and, and, and it's amazing, again, on a bicycle especially, it, it's a lot more approachable, and uh, people will come up and tell me, ask me anything from something about the bicycle to telling me something that's happening in their neighborhood. And that's something it yeah, is. You don't see all those lights and all that decals and stuff. Now, I've watched that. I'm wondered about that. I hadn't talked to you about it, mm -hmm. but I just wondered if somebody had some information or something going on in the community, they feel a lot easier talking to a guy on a bike than they would in a cruiser. Absolutely, and also the the dress down uniform. Yeah. Is, dress uh, down. Well, it's Man, you hurt my eyes. Right? It's, it's not the <laughs> uh, not not the polyester yeah. and and uh, quite as official looking, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I can't makes see you right now. Makes yeah. a lot of people a little bit little bit more at ease. Yeah. Well, uh, children would know would know on, on the bike thing, but I I've seen you around with adults too. You know, mm -hmm. talking to you and and you mentioned that events and stuff. Do you go to schools too? Do I, you? I do. I I work at, at schools quite a bit. Um, they. Uh, they're very welcoming. Yeah, we got we got some great uh, with the school system. I know you got uh, law enforcement that's there mm -hmm. uh, for, for officers that work inside the school. It's mm -hmm. uh, I feel so good about that. Our city of Oxford, the Armyville, and Coburn, and all those places. We, we have an officer in the, in the school every day. Yeah, in in each of the schools. But when you would you see would you be able to see things like bullying if it was going on over there? Your kid come up to you and say something about that. I have kids come up to me a lot. I, really? I do, and uh, I, I try to be there with the kids. Um, you can ask all the kids at Coldwater Elementary. I'm, I'm well known out there. I'll, I'll go around the lunch table and, and open up milks and ketchups and such. And uh, uh, kids, I've gotten a pretty good relationship with them, and uh, most of them know, know me by name. Wow. And uh, will come up and see me whenever I am riding a bike around the mall or around the exchange, and uh, come up and see me and talk to me there too. Well, you went for, uh, when you went from 911 to there, did you go directly from 911 there or did you say something no, in between? I, I worked at um, Anderson Police Department and Rainbow City Police Department okay. in the middle. What, what was the, uh, the transition from 911 to, to law enforcement? Was that 
the difference there? Would you just had that hankering to do that while you? I, I did. I did. I, I, I more got the the urge to want to be in law enforcement while working at nine one one, and uh, seeing how everybody worked together. Yeah. I, I really like really like the law enforcement side. It takes a lot of it takes a lot of people to make it work when you're uh, when when that phone call goes through and and people go into the police department or wherever it might be. While they're talking to you, people don't understand that. But while they're talking to the caller, there's buttons being pushed over here with the right or the left hand that's also bringing in fire, law enforcement, and all these people are listening to this conversation mm -hmm. as soon as they can program in. If someone said, I need the police, they are punching not only the police, but the police the closest to that individual is calling. Absolutely. So people don't realize when they call in, all your information about your place and according to where you're located is on the screen that they, they can see it immediately. They are. It's, it's a it's a big web that works yeah. works really well together. And of course, law enforcement has that same GPS system in their vehicle to mm -hmm. to get out there. That's uh, it's got it's got to be something. But community policing is, was was interested me when I asked you to come on here because with the attitude that people have about law enforcement today. Uh, you and I had a discussion. I gave you my feelings about the word "blue lives matter," and I, I tell you, I just hate those words because you darn right, all lives matter. That's Everybody's right. life matter. Why would we even be saying that somebody's life matters over mm -hmm. and I don't care who they are. Absolutely. I don't care how mean they are. If they're a thug, this life still matters. That's right, so all lives I, I, I don't. I'm. I'm not offended, but I just don't like the words "blue lives matter." But it's part of the culture we have today. But you guys out there with the people. You, you, the message that you're saying is we're real. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said something to me there about when you go in, you show them a picture of your family. I do. I do. I, I, my wife taught me that early on when I was dealing with kids that, that didn't want to talk to me. Your wife taught you something. My, you, don't, my, you don't mess this all up I'm, I'm going to admit to that. <laughs> uh, I, had a, had a, I had a child that, that really didn't want to talk to me, was nervous around me. And uh, she asked me why I didn't show her a picture of my daughter. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, that's a great idea. So now, Typically, when I start off and uh, am speaking to a group, I'll show them a picture of my wife, and I've got a, a five-year-old girl and a little boy that turns two in a in a, less than a week. Terrible and, uh, news. <laughs> yes, absolutely. He's already there, and uh, I'll I'll show a picture of them just to let them know that I'm I'm more than somebody that's just in a uniform. It's yeah. I'm, I'm actually a real person. I have a, a life at the house and uh, a family at home, and it's more than just just somebody in a uniform with a badge. Yeah. That, that but makes a lot of sense, but the fact that you would admit that your wife taught you something speaks volumes. <laughs> I, I, I have to admit when I'm wrong. So. You have to turn in your man card when you leave. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, uh, we joke about that, but I, I really think that to dispel, you know, I remember, I, t I think I told you that when I was a kid, uh, they did have police back in, by the way. <laughs> Our parents and others say, I'm going to call the police. We, to, to make the police the most, we were so afraid of them, so afraid to see that car come in. And, and I, I said, um, the best thing to do is think about it this way. If you're doing the speed limit, not like kids, you're back here in the control room, but if you're doing the speed limit and you got a driver's license and insurance thing, you shouldn't even be worried about the police. That's right. Well, yeah. That's actually a pet peeve of most of ours is someone saying there's a police, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell the police on you as yeah. like a, a child. Um, I, I'm, I'm who I want them to come to if they are in trouble. I, I don't want them to be feared of me. I'm not the one that should be feared. Yeah. You know, I'm, I, I want to be the good guy that, that's going to help them we're if they need help. Up, we're going to take that there. When we go to break, come back, we're going to talk more with Jerry about that very thing you're just talking about right there. Don't be afraid, but be glad. Be right back. Get your pen. <laughs> Welcome back to Veterans Issues. We're having too much fun here with the audience and, and the people in the control room, so that's okay. We, it's, it's, we left, we were talking with Jerry Lyon, Oxford Police. And Jerry, we were talking about don't be afraid of the police. I talked about that, I cut you off your commercial. But the, the whole thing is uh, you're to be visible out there in the, in the community is to say, I'm real, I got wife and kids, I live and breathe and I'm one of you, and, and I'm here when you need somebody. It's not to get you in trouble, but I'm here to get you out of trouble. Is that the kind of message y'all trying to do down there? A absolutely it is. And we, I, live, I work in a great community. O Oxford is, is amazing, and it's, it's amazing how, how kind people are to us here. I'm yeah. 
they love they love their uh, police department. But it, let me let me put you on the spot because we're taping and this goes out. What do you think about Bill Partridge as boss? He's he's one of the best bosses I've ever had. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud to work for him. I know you are, and really that was just uh, and, uh, you didn't make that up. I know he, Bill is a great guy. You got a lot of guys down there, Lieutenant Ridley, and all that bunch of, that uh, that's been on the show and talked about. They got a lot of pride in it. The thing I wanted to to get at is uh, a lot of the veterans out there coming back from Afghanistan and uh, there's no jobs available as you well know you know and what if, if one of them is uh, the spouse is watching today and they figure out how they're going to make it and feed these kids when they come back would you say law enforcement's a good career law enforcement's a great career right. I'm, I'm i'm proud to have gotten into to public safety and into yeah. law enforcement not to get rich you can forget mm. that <laughs> no it's it's not about getting rich if, yeah. if you want to get rich law enforcement's not not the direction i would go in but you can also take care of your family with it absolutely i can and yeah. and have a lot of pride in it yeah well the veterans most of the time they, most of them have a lot of pride in serving whether it's uh abroad or a home or whatever and this is a i, I try to say what are, what can you get into you can get into fire service you can get into medical or you can get in law enforcement those three are the constants that are going to be there but mm -hmm. i look at law enforcement as they wore a uniform over there they wear a uniform here and you're doing something special i can't think of anything more special than be a, what you do i kind of envy you but that bike you got you said it's a police bike it is a police bike i've seen you out training going in between the obstacle courses and yeah. hills we, and I, I went through a 40-hour class to uh, um, from the international police mountain bike association and actually after going through the class decided I wanted to, to do more and practiced and trained a lot and have just come back and have, I'm now an instructor for the International Police Mountain Bike Association. I'm one of two in the state for police and security cyclists and the only one in the state for EMS and fire cyclists. Well there's a fellow sitting there in that high chair, uh, recliner, I said a high chair, <laughs> sitting in the recliner and there's some folks here in the audience want to know what can you learn in a bike course that you're going to use out here? What? Well, and, and a lot of people think, I've ridden a bike since I was mm -hmm. a kid. What more do I need to know? Um, if you think about the places that I put a bicycle while I'm at work, either weaving through cars or a situation I was thinking of earlier from Oxford Fest, thousands of people around in a very small area. I was riding a bicycle slower than most people were walking having to stop you know when people would see something on the side and doing those slow speed drills um, that that's really what you're learning in the bike classes there's also some different tactics if if you were to come across an unruly crowd that that you could employ using the bicycles so, so you got a you got a carrier on the back of your cruiser or something to carry it on or you i do there, there's a carrier on, on the back of the patrol car and i'll carry it around to Wherever. Um, it may be the Exchange, it may be the Mall, um, Oxford Lake, Chocolaca Park, um, or just a, a neighborhood and just ride through a neighborhood and see who all's out and, and uh, who, all, who all I can talk to. Well, some of the pictures I saw, I ain't talking to you. It was on your time at home and the, the cul-de-sac or whatever you had mm -hmm. your things that you were climbing over and stuff like that. P part yeah. of the instructor school, I had to climb stairs and right. I'm, I'm not used to going upstairs on a bicycle. So I had to, I put in a lot of practice doing that and fell a few times <laughs> as well. I, I'll admit to that. Yeah. And uh, I tell you another part of police cycling is it, it gets your officers in, in better physical condition. And like uh, me. <coughs> this, uh, <laughs> this past Sunday, I actually completed the Chiha Challenge, the 100 mile, it, yeah. and uh, I'm, I'm very proud. That's one of the accomplishments I wanted to, uh, to do this year. So 11 hours, or what's your time? Uh, just under 10. Under just 10 under hours. 10. What is a good time? I, I finished, so that was a good time. <laughs> I, I see you guys Sunday when I go to church. I see some of them going this way, then I see some of them coming back this way. I say, Lord, I got this cruise control and I got air conditioning. It was hot out there, buddy. It, it was long and grueling, but it, it was a great accomplishment for me. I was on Highway 9, by the way. Okay. You know about that. We had lots of people that flew by us on Highway 9. I did <laughs> No, I was doing the speed limit. It is 75 in there, ain't it? <laughs> well, that, 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 that goes back to the, uh, the image that we're looking at, too, is the, is the nationwide, the image of law enforcement is at the bottom. We just built the law enforcement memorial. Uh, thank God your Chief Partridge uh, designed that tag. That, that law enforcement Absolutely. tag has been a 
been a godsend. It, it was able to build that whole uh, memorial just from those those funds. And y'all got to be a, proud of him. It's a good looking tag and for a great cause. Yeah. And, and I really am. I'm, I'm proud to work there and proud he's my yeah. boss. Yeah. He's a good I think he's out of town today as we we're doing this show, but he stays. He stayed out there again. He stayed on the top of the and thinks out of the box. And you mentioned that too. This is this is out of the box. But you can look in your major cities, New York, Chicago. You see law enforcement on bikes. You know a lot. Mm -hmm. But it's out of necessity. It's not out there as what you're doing is not out of necessity. You're doing it because you want to expand the police from the cruiser to the people. Mm -hmm. you, they're not going to walk up to the car with all them radios in there. Mm -hmm. And that's just it. Long ago, police did use bicycles, and that's when they used more foot patrol. And then when you had cars and radio, it took you away from the people. You could answer more calls and you could go further, but you weren't as close to your community. And now it start, tables are starting to turn, and uh, police are starting to use, use bicycles more, more often. Yeah, well, they back in the day, mine, they used mules. I, <laughs> I remember all that. And, uh, it was a, uh, can you hear a phone ringing in I the do. background? You know, I that's hear one that. of the things I always take a lot of pride in here is I always turn my phone in the off position. But uh, today I'm getting to hear that music in the background over there. Whoever's trying to call me, I'm busy, folks. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, I, I was going to make sure I got all these things here. So what is, what is uh, some of the memories you have of this that, that, that uh, your biggest moment out there since you started Community Police and something that, some little kid said or some person. Do you, did anything come to mind? You know, nothing in particular, but I, I can tell you I was, I was at Coldwater Elementary School earlier today, and school's winding, you know, coming to a close. And just to have all the kids to come up to me by name, you know, that know me by name, mm -hmm. get out of their car to give me a hug, and, and you know, their parents will stop and, and let me know that they, they cheer up and they smile whenever they see that I'm out there. Just those little things, those, those really add up and make it all worthwhile. Yeah, I got to address the, uh, a group of law enforcement up in there during law enforcement week. And there's a, there's a poem out or something, a message out on Facebook about I see you. Have you seen it? I have. And it, and it just goes on, you know, officer, I see you with your back against the wall in the restaurant so you can be covered and, and things like that. I see you when someone's filming you with a camera and all this stuff. And, and there's people out there like myself that really look up to you guys because where I wore a military uniform overseas, you wearing a uniform here, you're protecting home and I was abroad. It, it's all the same to me. There's no line that differentiates you from what I, my uniform I was wearing. But I, I appreciate you coming on the show today. And it's, uh, I want you to know as an Oxford citizen, I appreciate you doing what you're doing. You do it with a lot of pride and uh, whether you get paid for it or not, you get paid in your heart. Thank and I appreciate you, Jerry Lyon. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me, and thank you for your service. Right. Thank you, sir. And we're going to go to a break. Come back. i got news that you can use. Get the pen. Welcome back to Veterans Issues. I hope you got your pen. And Kizzy in the control room says she's got her crayon, so we're ready to go with some news that you can use. Uh, I got to tell you that the women's clinic and the uh, new parking de deck is open at the Birmingham VA. And it's on 2415 7th Avenue South. 2415 7th Avenue South. Put that in your GPS so you'll know where it is. Yeah, every week, somebody called me. I'm on the road. What is that address? So if you'll do that now, go out to your car after the show's over and program that in your GPS, and you'll be good to go to the next time. We were very excited this last week to unveil the Alabama Law Enforcement Memorial that we've been talking about for years on here. Uh, it's been 20 plus years for me, but we finally got it, got to pull the cover off of it, and it's located in Anniston at 17th and Quintard. If you're in the area, I know that we go out all over the, all over the state. You folks over in Birmingham, you need to come down I-20 and see this. And uh, the you folks that's over there watching us in Switzerland, when you get a chance to come back in America, you might want to come down to Anniston to look at this, uh, this memorial. And I say that because we do have viewers over in uh, Switzerland, and I know that you should I Twain. That's stalking me, but uh, anyhow, we, we do have a lot of viewers that see us on YouTube, and, and we appreciate you every week. Uh, the law enforcement tag that we talk about on here, that is, the, that is the revenue that we got from that tag was what we built that law enforcement memorial with, and we're going to be looking at the uh, Firefighters Memorial, Iraq, Afghanistan memorials in the future, so uh, keep purchasing that law enforcement tag. It goes with your, goes with your car. I don't care what color it is. It's a, it's a beautiful tag, and it says that's, that's it right there, folks. Look at that shield and that rose. 
that is the symbol for the fallen law enforcement memorial. And so when you display that on your vehicle, you're making a statement. You're, you're telling folks that uh, follow you that you really do appreciate those who died in the line of duty. I want to remember the Kia store uh, here in Anniston and in uh, Gadsden, the owner, Don Hobson, who is a special forces uh, guy, and he uh, gives discounts to veterans and, and to the uh, first responders uh, like Jerry Lyons and those here. So keep in mind the Kia store here in, uh, in Anniston when you get ready to purchase a car. Uh, I reported that uh, Representative K.O. Brown voted against the veterans for the prison reform. But after a discussion with uh, KL, I found out why he uh, gave that vote, and it was because of, he was deceived by the guy that was trying to talk to the others. He works for the governor, and he was walking the floor, giving out false information to the representatives, and that's how some of them voted for the prison bill. So I'm going to give him a pass. Uh, KL Brown's a good guy, and uh, he didn't vote for that to, to put prisoners before veterans. So because he thought everything was cool. And he was told so by a representative of the governor, which was, uh, I, I really feel bad that we got that kind of thing going on in Montgomery, but it shouldn't surprise anybody. Uh, let's see, now we got something, the veterans that have the word veteran on your driver's license, uh, the Lowe's in uh, Oxford would honor that, but the one in Anniston wouldn't, and uh, we got that corrected, and they now honor your, your uh, driver's license. You got the word veteran on it. You can get that put on there at any time, I think it's like 18 bucks. But if you want it, when you get ready to, train, to renew your driver's license for free, you could, with a DD-214 showing that you're a veteran, uh, you can have that put on there for free. So keep that in mind. It works good around uh, Veterans Day in places where you get discounts. Of course, places like IHOP and those Applebee's, they give the veteran discount all year round. So uh, it's a good thing to have that on your driver's license. Okay, we did keep telling we run out of time in the back up there. So I just want to, uh, I want to, I want to thank Jerry for coming on here and doing the show today, Jerry Lyons, and he's uh, he's of a different breed of law enforcement. If you need Jerry to come out and and visit with your people, uh, just give him a call down at the Oxford Police Department and tell him you want a community police officer down there and ask for Jerry Lyons. You'll be proud you did. This week's salute goes out to all of those who have purchased that law enforcement tag and although they're going to purchase it. We'll see you right here on next week on Veterans Issues.